I was quite surprised to hear you talk about the idea that we all exist on a spectrum where you wake up one day and you feel like you're more female and more male. The XXXY chromosomes are insufficient because when we wake up in the morning, we exaggerate whatever feature we want to portray the gender of our choice. You know society is doomed when the comedian makes more sense than the astrophysicist. Hello everyone, if you are a new viewer, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If this is your second, third, fourth time watching one of my videos and you are not yet subscribed, we already go together. Make it official and hit that subscribe button. I have the goal of making it to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you would like to help me achieve that goal, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. But today I am going to be reacting to a very viral clip from the Trigonometry Podcast. One of your functions over time has been to communicate scientific knowledge to the public. Yeah. And that's why I was quite surprised to hear you talk about the idea that we all exist on a spectrum where you wake up one day and you feel like you're more female and more male. The XXXY chromosomes are insufficient. Because when we wake up in the morning, we exaggerate whatever feature we want to portray the gender of our choice. Suppose no matter my chromosomes, today I feel 80% female, 20% male. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on makeup. I'm gonna do that. Um, tomorrow I might feel 80% male. I'll remove the makeup and I'll wear a muscle shirt. Why do you care? Yeah. What, 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 what business it, is it of yours to require that I fulfill your inability to think of gender on a spectrum? Is he on drugs? Like, that's a serious question. I mean, he was, he was slurring his words a little bit. To require that I fulfill... You know, I think the average person doesn't give a shit about other people's fashion choices, at least not enough to protest about it. The issue that people have is with individuals like Neil deGrasse Tyson who want to act like reality is a matter of opinion. What does he mean that XX and XY are insufficient? Your chromosomes are probably the most significant thing about your existence, whether you like it or not. There are things that affect people based off of their chromosomes. Take, for example, Turner syndrome. Turner syndrome, a condition that affects only females, results when one of the X chromosomes is missing or partially missing. Turner syndrome can cause a variety of medical and developmental problems, including short height, failure of the ovaries to develop, and heart defects. To say that your chromosomes are insufficient, no. That just makes no f***ing sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. This man is honestly trying to treat gender as a matter of opinion. Gender is not a matter of opinion. And if you are one of those individuals who believes that there is a difference between sex and gender, I'm going to stop you right there before you go type in the comment section because I have a beef to pick with you, you wokies, okay? <laughs> There's people that want us to believe and to accept that there is a difference between sex and gender. That, you know, a woman is how you feel, but a female is your biology, okay? These are the same individuals, right, who in the trans community use the phrase MTF, male to female. If your biological sex is a fixed reality, why do you guys have the phrase MTF? A male cannot become a female. A female cannot become a male. You guys don't play by your own rules. WTF. This ideology has completely mangled the English language and people are treating gender and sex as a matter of opinion. My existence is not a matter of opinion. It is a fact. I am a woman. I am a female. It's not a matter of opinion. It just is. My only point was that if who you decide is male and female in the street is a construct of, of, of style, 
and trends and what the beauty industrial complex wants you to see, if that's how we establish gender... No, no, no. There's more ways that you can tell if someone is a male or a female. The size of their shoulders, their waist to hip ratio, if they have an Adam's apple, if they have a deep voice, their height, because men tend to be taller than women, hands, their, their facial structure, their jawline, if they have facial hair, those are all of the things that we use to assess someone's gender. So if I see someone with a beard and a skirt, I'm not gonna think that they're a woman. I'm gonna think they're a man in a skirt. But is it really? Is that up for debate? If that's how we establish gender, then maybe some people want to be fluid within that gender. Identify. So they'll they'll wear a skirt, but maybe have a beard. Or they'll I, mix and match that in whatever way Neil, you want. Sorry, hold on, sorry. hold on. I'm not, wait, wait, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So, okay. if a person using the tools of the beauty industrial complex wants to mix and match this, yeah. and they are expressing their freedom in a free country to do so, mm. why is your job to tell them not to? Okay. That's my only go. point. And so That's... I, I'm speaking of gender expression and the yeah. freedom to do so. And, and, and if, you, if, you if, if you want to restrict that, then what country wants, are you on, we living hold in? On. Yeah, hold go on. ahead. So first of all, I don't know a single person uh, and I've talked. We've talked to trans people on the show. We have trans employees at Trigonometry. Uh, we we've spoken to all sorts of people about this issue. I do not know a single person who wants to prevent people from dressing how they want, or behaving how they want, or choosing any name that they want. However, well, the wait, problem okay. is so. So you don't. But you know, such people are out there. You I'm sure that. such people exist in the same way that there are people who you believe that, that okay. the earth is flat and so on, but yeah, they're okay. a tiny minority. They exist. It is I don't not know how tiny they are, given the dialogue today, <laughs> Fair but go point. on. Fair yeah. point. However, what I would say is that the conversation in the public consciousness has become prominent not between people who want to defend the right of anyone to dress how they want and the people who want to prevent that. The reason the conversation has become an issue is that we assign and allow certain privileges to people based on their sex. If you are female, you get to go to places that only other females are in, like changing rooms and toilets and so on. If you are female, you get to compete only with people of your sex because females are at a disadvantage in physical competition to males in almost every sport. In other words, we carve out certain areas where your sex matters tremendously even though we may respect your right everywhere else to believe that you are whatever you are, to dress however you are, etc. So your claim that today you woke up and put lipstick on and uh, grew your hair out long and tweezed out your mustache and whatever, and therefore you are female, has an impact on other people in certain contexts in which that is a problem. You and gave only two contexts. Do you have others? Sorry, I wasn't finished. And in, 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 in those contexts, it is essential, people would argue, to protect women from unfair competition and from various risks for which female-only spaces already exist. That's why people are having this conversation. Okay. It's not out of bigotry. But you have more than those two examples, and I'll address each of those in turn, but you have more than those two. Probably not. Okay, so. Uh, the arrogance of this man, he's acting as if those two examples are not important, but I can give some more examples. Uh, let's see, women's prisons. If you house males, especially those that are violent criminals, in a women's prison, well, what do you think is going to happen? Actually, we don't need to imagine it. Two female inmates at a supposedly all women's prison in New Jersey have just become pregnant. We wonder how that happened. Well, it turns out those women had sexual encounters with another inmate who was a biological man passing as a woman. Another space is women's shelters. Women often have to stay in shelters because they are fleeing an abusive man. So if you now allow men who identify as women to stay in shelters, it's no longer a safe place for women. Another area where gender is relevant is when reporting crime statistics because women are often the victim of violent crimes at the hands of men. So if we're not going to 
identify who in society is a male or a female, how can we meaningfully record these, these crime statistics? And one last example, gynecologists. I saw a video go viral of a trans woman, so a biological man who was on, I don't know, some, some streaming platform. And he was bawling, complaining, he's angry because he went to the gynecologist and he's trying to get treatment from the gynecologist and she won't treat him and he's being discriminated against and, and oh, woe is me, woe is me. Okay, so you're trying to tell me now that a gynecologist can now be liable to be sued because she doesn't want to treat a testicle person? Someone who doesn't have the parts that she's trained or he is trained in taking care of? And so, um what they had said to me it's like well we don't do that here and i'm like but you're a gyne gynecologist office why wouldn't you well we don't treat trans patients so you're discriminating against me is what you're telling me so sports, let me address those two examples directly i'll address them. sports is very important i, I you said that female you don't have to repeat. Spaces. i remembered so yeah. um so but you don't seem to have a third example so and even if you do, we presume that would be a very distant third compared to those two cases. Right. The, no, there's a third one I can give you very easily no, in this me, country. For politics, we have female-only shortlists for uh, positions in, in parliament. Uh, therefore, oh, I didn't know about claim that. That's that, interesting. Okay. Well, that's another example. I can give you more. So uh, female-only shortlists, there are certain targets within corporations for uh, diversity targets to have a certain number of women on the board. Therefore, when you make a claim that you are female, you are attempting, whether intentionally or not, to insert yourself into categories that are deliberately designed to protect women's interests. That is the concern that people have. So there's four examples for you there. Please address okay, them. Okay, sure. So I, I, interesting about the parliament. I have to look into that to find out mm -hmm. what the... Is, is it is it try to ensure the representation of women? Is that the goal? That's correct. Yes, yeah, okay, correct. fine. So it's a perfectly noble cause there. So um, about uh, personal... Uh, changing spaces, okay? Uh -huh. um, uh, that's a solvable problem, of course. And we basically have accomplished that here in Manhattan, where I live. Uh, practically all bathrooms are either uh, multi-gender or, or, or solo bathrooms, so only one person at a time, mm -hmm. or you walk into a space and there's stalls that are closed off, but then you exit the stall and you come to a communal sink. So there are solutions to the privacy problem, and we've all but solved that here. I can't speak for every state in the United States. Definitely here in New York City. The bathrooms, it's not, all right, there's that. Second, with sports, very interesting. Um, there was a case where a woman wanted to be disqualified, they wanted to disqualify her from a, an event, and she had very big muscles, and she had naturally high testosterone levels, okay? And she was genetically female, but uh, unusually high um, testosterone levels. I'm so tired of people using this example when they say that trans women should be allowed to compete in women's sports. Do you want to see the person that he's talking about? The athlete that he's talking about is named Castor Semenya. Castor Semenya is a South African track and field athlete. This is Castor. When you're the best in the world, People get obsessed, you know, with what you do. And then comes a genetic, <laughs> okay? We all different anyway, in kind of a way, in, you know, in life. Uh, we, we, we different, you know. How I perform, you know, it draws attention, you know, from people. And then, obviously, such people like those you mentioned, which is I cannot mention. <laughs> they think probably I have a, an advantage. So Castor is allegedly intersex, and I have to say allegedly because the World Athletics Organization asked Castor to do a sex verification test because people were saying that Castor is a man. So they asked Castor to do a sex verification test, and they have kept the results private but it has been leaked that Castor has XY chromosomes. And apparently Castor has a disorder, so Castor is intersex. Castor has all of the physiological traits of someone who has gone through male puberty. And that gives Castor an advantage when competing in women's sports. Castor has very high testosterone levels, so much so that the World Athletics Organization has asked Castor to lower their testosterone levels so that they can compete 
against women. And if I'm being honest, I think the the most likely reason that Castor has such high testosterone levels is because Castor, being an intersex person, probably also has testes. I don't think that Castor should be competing with women. I think that Castor should be competing in the male category. Castor looks like they've gone through male puberty. Castor has very high testosterone levels. Castor has XY chromosomes. Castor should be competing with the other XY individuals, the men. Uh, okay, well, can we just co come back to the female shortlist and other opportunities that women are afforded by mm -hmm. virtue of being women? And them now being excluded from that because males are entering that competition. Yeah, so another, a deeper problem, thank you for bringing that up. A deeper problem there is, um, why were women underrepresented to begin with? What kind of bias exists within parliament or among the voters, maybe even the female voters, that prevented the representation from being there in the first place? That, that's a whole other social question that maybe can and should be answered at a deeper level than a quota coming in after the fact. Oh, I, that, I'm not a fan of quotas, but th if they exist... That's how I would address that question. Hold on a second. That's not addressing the question at all. The question is, female shortlist exists. Should biological males be allowed to enter those female shortlists? That's that's as simple as, as the question is. Yeah, I'm saying, you. I would ask why you have the shortlist in the first place. It's because there's something, there's something deeper that's wrong with society that women are underrepresented in governance. So to, to, so to say now, to, to protect that now and not try to get to the root of that problem, I think is the cart in front of the horse. So, so I would go deeper to that problem. So but you don't there are have women to have whose, that question. whose opportunities are being curtailed today. I, I think uh, a lot of people would have an issue with what you're saying, Neil, is because they see women being denied opportunities. They see an unfair playing field, metaphorically and literally speaking. So fix the playing field, damn it! What, what, don't, don't say it's an unfair playing field, so all of a sudden the big issue is trans women taking the slot of a woman in an unfair playing field. Fix the playing field, and you know something? The day you fix that playing field, this conversation will look completely ridiculous. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Stupid. You know, I was looking at the comment section of this video and it's actually reassuring to know that common sense still exists. He literally said at the beginning that the women quotas were a noble thing. Then when they mentioned trans taking their spots, he says it shouldn't exist in the first place. <laughs> a supposed scientist asking, why do you care? is like a doctor asking, why do you want to be healthy? His ignorance is matched by his arrogance. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you are not subscribed, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you would like to see my other social media platforms like Instagram or my Patreon, I will have my links in the description box down below. If you like this video and you would like to see more just like this, I will have two more videos for you in the end cards that I think you will enjoy. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye. Thank you.